Who once worked at Checkpoint and developed stateful inspection technology at the heart of all today's firewalls? As well as working on the world's very first firewall? Who founded OneSecure and built the world's very first intrusion prevention system? Who then sold OneSecure to NetScreen, which in turn sold to Juniper for over $4 billion? Who has now moved to Silicon Valley to create one of the most talked about startups and is now hell bent on revolutionizing IT security? One name fits them all. And that name is Nir Zuk, serial entrepreneur, founder, and CTO of Palo Alto Networks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I introduce the one and only Nir Zuk to share his vision of the future malware storm that now darkens our horizon and explain what steps the industry must take to avoid it. A big hand, please, for Nir Zuk. I'm Nir, I'm the founder of Palo Alto Networks. And today I'm going to talk about modern malware. You've probably heard about attacks against these companies in recent months. Uh, the attacks against RSA, where a lot of their key intellectual property was stolen. Um, attacks against Sony PlayStation. Um, you probably haven't heard about the Epsilon that much in this part of the world. The common thing to all these attacks is that the attacker used a new kind of malware, a new kind of way to perform their attacks. It used to be that to attack the data center, the attacker went directly at it, right? So that's why we all have firewalls around our data centers. We have IPS, intrusion prevention system, around the data center. And we have other technologies protecting the data center. Well, that's not the way things happen today. Back then, the attacks were very big in scale, meaning they attacked a lot of machines. They tried to spread to as many machines as possible and make a little gain from each and every machine. Maybe steal a credit card number, maybe spam with emails to sell by Agra or whatever. They tried to make very little money from each machine, and because they were able to spread to so many machines, they could make a good amount of money out of these attacks. Today, to attack the data center, what the attackers do is they attack an end user that has access to the data center. The attack has five steps. The first step, in the first step, the attacker tries to get an end user to open a document, like a PDF document, a PowerPoint presentation, an Excel spreadsheet, an MP3 song, a movie, a flash, maybe even just visit the website. That's the first step. Get a list of many of your employees from LinkedIn. Then I can go to Facebook or Twitter and learn about these users. I can learn who their friends are, what they like, what they don't like, and then develop an attack that only works for that user. If I find that you have two key employees that like golfing, I can create a PDF document, or a PowerPoint presentation, or even a website that talks about 10 ways to improve your swing. And then, send that document, or a link to that website, making it appear as if it came from one of their friends. In the second part of that app, this PDF document I just sent, or the PowerPoint presentation, or whatever, is going to exploit an unknown vulnerability, and the result of that is that a very small piece of code is going to run on this machine. We call that piece of code an exploit, or dropper, or something like that, that is then going to perform the third step. In the third step, the exploit is going to go out to the internet and download a big program called the backdoor. Okay, it's kind of a Trojan that gets installed in the machine and it allows the attacker to do whatever they want on that machine. 
In the fourth step, that program is going to connect outside to the attacker, creating what we call a back channel, a command and control connection, CLC. Now that the attacker has a program running on your network, connected back to the attacker, they can execute the fifth step of the attack, which is pretty much do whatever they want on the network. This is how attacks happen today. They don't attack the web server. They don't attack the email server. They don't attack what's the traditional network security, what the traditional network security infrastructure is protecting. They attack an end user. So to protect against an attack, of course, we would like to protect at each and every step of the attack. Because there's no 100% protection. So even if we miss some here, they will be caught here. And the few that still make it will be caught here. And so on and so forth. The sad news or the bad news is that today, we don't protect at any of these states. Or any of these stages, sorry. There is not a single stage today that we're doing a good job protecting against attacks. The traditional IPS can only scan web browsing and email. It cannot scan all these applications. But this is a small problem. There is a bigger problem. It takes many months from the time an attack like that happens until the IPS industry responds to it. In the past, the goal of the attacker was to get on as many machines as possible, as quickly as possible. That's very easy to spot. It's very easy to see something that is so widespread. And the IPS vendors became really good at doing that. The problem is that with the new malware, the attackers are very smart. They are only attacking a few users in few companies for a few minutes, and that's it. If you don't catch the attack in those five minutes on these five networks, you'll never find it. Probably many of you heard about Project Aurora. About two years ago, Google, Gmail, and other vendors like Juniper, like Morgan Stanley in the United States were attacked by an attack that might have originated in China. Nobody knows the exact details. And we found out about that attack in the middle of January 2010. Actually, the vulnerability in Internet Explorer that was exploited in this attack were, was reported to Microsoft four months before that attack. The attack was probably going on for about two months before we knew about it. And then one day, it broke out. Even after the attack was known, it still took another week, seven days, to protect the world against it. That's unacceptable. You can lose your business in one week. Of course, in two months, you can lose more of it. Antivirus vendors can't deal with such attacks. Antivirus vendors need to see things happening a lot in the wild before they call it an attack, they analyze it, and they protect against it. If it only happens once to one customer, or a few times to a few customers, they will never analyze it. They don't have if you'd like to read the full transcript of his speech, together with his presentation, you can download them free from the NetEvents website. Read Nirzuk's blueprint for stopping modern malware now, before it's too late.